I've been pretty loose about where you've been working in the room, but now that the clay center is open, we really do need to be working at the correct centers. So I've also rearranged a little bit. Let me take you on a quick tour. Just ignore that the chairs are up. Um, right here in this middle front table is the fiber center. I combined some of the chairs from both of those tables and made one big table with eight spots. Over here we have the drawing center, pretty much where it was, only scooted forward a little bit. In the back, tilted sideways, we have our painting center. So if you're painting, you need to be back there. And over here, as of today, is our Sculpture Center, and it's opening with clay today. The information for the Clay Center or the Sculpture Center is over here on this bulletin board. And you do have two options to choose from, so you're going to choose one of those two projects to do. But before I explain the two projects, let's talk a little bit about the rules at the Clay Center. Follow all directions when using clay, and make sure you're working on your placemat. This keeps our table clean also keeps particles out of your clay. Make sure your clay pieces aren't too skinny or too fat. If you make a piece that's really teeny tiny and skinny like this, it's probably going to break before it even makes it into the kiln. If you make a piece of clay that's nice and fat like this, fatter than your thumb, chances are it won't dry out all the way and that means it's going to explode in the kiln. So make sure you make things a medium size. When I take two pieces of clay and attach them together, they will stick together if I just push them together while they're wet, but as soon as this clay dries, there's nothing holding them together and they're going to just fall apart. So to stick clay to clay, we always scratch attach with the five S's. What are the five S's? I'm glad you asked. We use the five S's to scratch attach clay and the five S's are score, slip, score, smush and smooth, score, slip, score, smush and smooth. All right, do it with me, here we go. Score, slip, score, smush and smooth. Score, slip, score, smush and smooth. One more time, score, slip, score, smush and smooth. All right, let's see what those scoring is scratching up. So I scratch up both pieces of clay where they're going to touch each other. Score, slip, so slip is next. Slip is clay mud, it's just clay and water mixed together. I just get a little on my finger and put it on. This is like your glue. Score, slip, score, so I score it again to make sure I didn't smooth out any of those rough edges. Smush. I smush it together, I put a little pressure and give it a little wiggle, and smooth, I smooth the edges. That is how we scratch attach, and this clay will not come back apart. If you make a mistake in your clay project, do not ball it up and squish it and start over again. That creates little air pockets that will explode in the kiln. Instead, figure out a way to fix it without squishing it up and starting over. Ready to clean up, make sure you wash your hands carefully in the bucket by the sinks. Be very careful that you don't splash the water. It needs to stay in the bucket. Once you're finished rinsing all the clay off your hands in the bucket, then you may wash your hands in the sink like you usually do with soap. The reason we do this is so that a whole bunch of clay doesn't go down the drain and clog up the sink drain. Have fun with the clay and make good choices. You have two options at the Clay Center. You can either make a medieval castle like this, or you can make a terracotta warrior like this. Let's look at how to make a castle first. I'm going to show you how to make a very basic castle, but you can make yours as elaborate and decorated as you'd like. Okay, there are pictures and charts up on the board to give you ideas of parts of medieval castles. Remember, medieval castles were mostly for defense so that they could protect the royal family uh, if anything were to happen, if anyone was to invade or to attack. Okay, so think about ways to protect your castle and also that, think about other details that are just going to make it look really super cool. To make your castle, start out with a slab and a tracer. If you want those diagonal steps across the front of your castle, cut out the whole thing. If you don't want the diagonal steps, then leave off that diagonal part that's over on the left-hand side of your tracer. Keep your scraps so you can add details with them later. Your next step is to cut out any kinds of extra designs you want, like the steps or battlements across the top, windows, doors, any kinds of extra things you can think of. Make sure you smooth out those areas with your finger or a tool so that they aren't all lumpy and bumpy and rough when it's dry and fired. You can use the tools to scratch in any kinds of extra designs you want. Again, just get rid of any little pieces. I call them clay boogers. One other option is to press the side of an eraser in to make a texture like it has a stone tech front. When you're happy with your design, you're ready to roll up your castle and where the front meets the back, you need to make sure you use the five S's to attach it, scratch attach it. So score, slip, score, smush, and smooth so it will stay together. 
Then you can finish trimming up anything that got messed up when you rolled it up or add any other details you can think of with your extra clay, including a bottom if you would like to. You don't have to add a bottom, but if you'd like to, make sure you use the five S's and scratch attach it on there. You can use one of your extra pieces, trim around it, and you'll have a nice bottom on your castle. When you're happy with it and everything's nice and smoothed out, write your name and period on the bottom and I'll show you where to set it to dry. The Terracotta Warriors are a collection of life-size clay warriors that were made a little before 200 BC. They were buried with the first emperor of China, Qin Shu Huang, to protect him in the afterlife. Each warrior is hand-carved with different facial features, hairstyle, and armor so that they each have a unique personality. The army was discovered in 1974 by a group of farmers who were digging a well. There are more than 8,000 soldiers, 130 chariots, and 520 horses. You're going to start out the same way with a slab and a tracer and trim around it very carefully. Save your extra pieces for later. You're going to curve this into a cone shape this time and do make sure you scratch attach it. Score, slip, score, smush and smooth and you're going to smooth it out on the outside and smooth it out on the inside. That's going to become the body of your warrior. Your next job is to roll a coil and this is going to be attached across the back to make your uh, warrior's two arms. Check the size of it. You don't want super long arms. And then you're going to scratch attach it to the back. When you are smoothing it and smushing it, make sure you don't smush it so thin that the arms are going to fall off. Once you have arms on there, your next job is to make a head. So you're going to take another piece of clay, roll it into a ball, and you're basically making a pinch pot like you probably did in elementary school. You're just turning it and pinching it between your thumb and your four fingers. Then I like to squeeze in the bottom to make a chin, squeeze in a little in the middle to make eye sockets and part of a nose, push up on the bottom to make the bottom part of the nose, and you can add details any way you want. Just anytime you add clay to your project, like I'm adding this man bun here, you make sure you scratch attach and then scratch attach the head to the body. Once the head is attached, add lots of details. Don't forget about armor and hands, anything you can come up with. Be creative. When you're totally done, write your name and period on the bottom, and I'll show you where to put it to dry.